All right. Welcome back to ABA exam review. Today, we're beginning our BCBA task list review series where we're going through each section of the BCBA task list one by one, giving you definitions and questions to better understand what you need to know for your exam. So today we are starting with philosophical underpinnings, A1, goals of science, description, prediction, and control. Be sure to check out behavioranalyststudy.com for all of our study materials. Please like and subscribe. Let us know when you pass so we can include you in our Sunday shout out. Work hard, study hard. Let's get going. So A1, goals of science, description, prediction, control. This is what we're trying to achieve through behavior analysis. What we're trying to understand is socially valid behavior change. And that term socially valid is going to come up over and over and over again. It's what we're focused on. We don't want to just make behavior change for the sake of behavior change. When we change behavior, it needs to be meaningful in that person's life and then the other people around them as well. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to identify observable truths and facts about our world. And it's very important, this word observable. Remember, we want to be able to see what we're measuring so that we can change it. Additionally, we're looking for facts, right? These truths and facts are objective and are not based on prior belief systems. That's the crux of science. Because in ABA, we don't say, well, this is what I feel. OK, it's what we observe and what we observe repeatedly. And we're trying to objectively demonstrate behavior change and observable, measurable behavior that can be consistently and reliably seen. So description, prediction and control are the three levels of scientific understanding. Question, which of the following answer choices is not one of the three major components of scientific understanding? We know A, description, is one of our levels. B, verification. Where does verification come from? Verification comes from baseline logic. And you've got to be careful because there's a lot of situations like this. You know, if we're talking about reliable data, right? We want data to be accurate, valid, and reliable. Uh, baseline logic is prediction, verification, replication. So it's very easy to get these things kind of mixed up. Right. So with goals of science, we need description, prediction and control. And if you can get those down, OK, you're going to be off to a good start. So we know description, control and prediction are our three major components of scientific understanding. Which one is not? Well, it's going to be B, verification. So let's get to description. Description is the first level of scientific understanding. All it is is the observation of behavioral events. We're not changing anything yet. We're not predicting anything yet. All you're doing is you're sitting at that client's house and you're observing behavior. You're observing the client interact with their environment. You're observing the client interact with their parents, with their siblings, and how the environment is responding back to that client's interactions. Again, all we're doing is observation, okay? We're not quite yet forming or even making a prediction, and we're definitely not manipulating anything quite yet. So through observation, right, we can describe the events we observed. And through this observation, then it's going to lead to our prediction or hypothesis. So don't get ahead of yourselves here, right? Essentially, all we're doing right now is maybe defining behaviors, okay? Describing the environment that we're going to have to work in. When a client does this, this happens. That's all we're doing it. Okay. We're not saying why it's happening. We're not manipulating antecedents and consequences. We're just describing what we're objectively observing for that learner, for that client, for that environment. Question. Joanna is conducting a direct assessment on a new client in her clinic. Client builds a block tower, then knocks it down and looks at Joanna and smiles. Joanna smiles back and the client builds the tower and knocks it down again. Joanna writes this sequence down. What level of understanding is displayed here? All right, let's be careful, right? We know, and I'm sure reading this, I'm sure I know what you're thinking. Well, clearly, this client is engaging in attention-seeking behavior, right? Builds the tower, knocks it down, smiles. Joanna smiles back. He does it again, okay? So like any good ABA practitioner, we're already trying to predict our functions. However, Joanna didn't predict anything. She didn't manipulate anything. 
All she did was write down what she observed. And that's description. She's just describing what she's seeing. Okay. She's at the very beginning of this life cycle. Okay. With this particular person. So what level of understanding is displayed here? A, description, yes. B, prediction. Well, we haven't made a prediction yet. Joanna's not trying to say why it's happening. She's simply not uh, writing it down. And then C, control. Control is going to be our highest level. If we're not manipulating anything, well, we can't demonstrate control. So what level of understanding is displayed here? A, description. Prediction. Prediction is the next level. After we've described and observed, now we're going to start to say, all right, well, when this happens, this tends to also happen. So two events tend to occur in the presence of one another. This is your hypothesis. If this event happens, this other event is likely to happen as well. You see dark clouds in the sky. Well, it's probably going to rain because in the presence of dark clouds, typically rain is produced. Very important that observations occur repeatedly. We don't observe one time, and then we form all our predictions off that one observation. Remember, we have to see these things over and over and over again. Behavior should be repeatable. You're not manipulating anything when making a prediction. So if you believe that the function of that behavior is to obtain a tangible, you're stopping there when you're making a prediction. You're not yet manipulating anything in the prediction stage. It's one level above <clears throat> description because we're no longer just observing. We're now making hypotheses and guesses, but we're not quite manipulating yet. And then you're predicting a correlation, not a causation, right? So dark clouds and rain are correlated, right? But we're not always going to say, well, the dark clouds caused the rain. Okay, we're predicting correlations between environmental events and behavior because the problem is we can't control the environment 100%, right? There are so many different factors in the environment that could be impacting the behavior that we're not even aware of. So when we talk about our predictions and our hypotheses, we're saying these things are correlated. We're not saying this causes this. We're just saying, typically, when this happens, this also happens. So prediction is a correlation, not a causation. The following day, Joanna begins training a technician on the new client. Joanna observes as the client stacks toy cars on top of each other, knocks them over, and then smiles at the technician. Joanna tells the technician that the client is prone to attention-seeking behavior. What level of understanding is this? All right, Joanna's moved one step up, right? She's no longer just observing. Why? Well, it's happened again. The client not only stacked items again, knocked them over, and then smiled, but we're repeating the process from yesterday. So she's observed it multiple times. And now finally, she's going to hypothesize this is attention-seeking behavior. Notice she has not yet manipulated anything. Okay, She's not demonstrating anything any level of control here. All she says is there's a correlation because I've seen these things occur together over and over and over again. That's all prediction is. Don't make a prediction stronger than it actually is, right? So what level of understanding is this? A, description. What's well, one level above description, right? Because Joanna's actually made a hypothesis. So what has Joanna done is predicted what she believes is occurring. Now, it's not quite yet control. We're about to talk about control, okay? Control, right, is now we're saying there's a functional relation that exists through experimentation. We're saying we're able to consistently change the behavior, our dependent variable, by manipulating interventions or other events. So we're actually going in there now and manipulating antecedents and consequences and looking at its effect on behavior. Because if we want to create reliable behavior change, we have to be able to demonstrate control. If we don't have control, we can't reliably change that behavior. And you've got to be reasonably certain it was your intervention and not any confounding variables that change the behavior. Again, the reason we have correlations and not causations 
is because there are too many things in the environment we can't control. Now, you can be reasonably sure, right, based on your data, that your intervention is the reason that behavior is changing. But you're never going to be 100% sure, right? You can't be 100% sure. So you can say there's a functional relation that exists through your manipulation. And if you're able to reach that level of understanding, you have control and you can reliably produce behavioral change. So to recap, we are going to describe what we see. We're starting with just an observation. All you're doing is observing, recording what you see. Then from that repeated observation, you're going to predict, if I do this, this will happen. I think this is happening because of this. And that prediction is going to lead straight into your experimentation where you're actually going to do that thing. You're going to manipulate the interventions and then see what effect does it have on behavior. And if you can reliably change your interventions and reliably can produce change in behavior, you can demonstrate control. And this is where we want to get ultimately in our behavior change procedures. Question, last time Tim offered his son broccoli, his son ran from the table. This time, Tim showed his son a piece of chocolate cake and said, if you eat your broccoli, you can have this piece of cake. What is the dependent variable in this scenario? Now, remember, the independent variable is what we are uh, manipulating. The dependent variable is going to change or not change depending on our manipulation, but we're trying to change the dependent variable. So the dependent variable is typically going to be your behavior. So the DV in this situation is what? Well, what is Tim trying to change? Well, he wants his son to not run from the table when he sees broccoli. So that's his dependent variable. What Tim is doing is he's, he's implementing this intervention, right? If you eat your broccoli, you can have this piece of cake. So the dependent variable in this scenario is not A, the cake, right? We're not we're not trying to change the cake or change the broccoli. What Tim is trying to change is the running. And he's trying to change that running through his intervention, right, of if you eat your broccoli, you can have this piece of cake. So to demonstrate control, how will that happen? Well, to demonstrate control, Tim would have to record that once he introduced his intervention, his son stopped running from the table. And if he can reliably do that, that's control. And this is where things like our withdrawal designs come in, right? Because if Tim then, let's say, withdrew the intervention and just presented the broccoli and his son ran away again, now we can really say, well, there's a strong correlation and a strong functional relation between our intervention and our dependent variable. And so that's really important to remember because as you build on your knowledge through the task list, you're going to start to notice how everything starts to tie together. And there's a good reason the task list starts with description, prediction, and control, because it's really the foundation for everything else you do, right? Description is all your observations, your assessments, predictions is your analyses and what's the function. And then control is when we're actually changing that behavior. Fantastic. That is A1, Goals of Behavior Analysis as a Science, Description, Prediction, and Control. Make sure you check out behavioranalyststudy.com for all of our study materials. Please like, subscribe, let us know when you pass so we can put you in our Sunday shout out. As always, work hard, study hard. See you soon.